So join us back on the next instalment of the Gemini Carp Tackle Carp Interest Collaboration. And in this video we're at Thorpe Fisheries, which is right next door to Heathrow Airport. I'll let Pete talk you through our spots and what our tactics are going to be this session. So tactics, the next three days here at Thorpe are going to be bags and booms. Each one of us are going to have one bag and one boom out on our spots. And we're both going to create our own bar across the lake. We're going to fish in the silt. We've also brought some house pellets and house boily, air drying in one of our slings. So for the booms, we've both opted to go for the Ronnie rig. Uh, this one's got a little white pop-up on it, but the one I've got out in the water at the minute is yellow. I think Pete might be using a white pop-up on his. Both of us going for the Ronnie rigs. So there's a little bit of silt out there and we just want to make sure that we're presented. And without a doubt, for the solid bags, we're using Gemini Carp Tackle's tidy stems. So as you probably noticed in all the previous videos, burgers, or boigers, are a bit of a ritual for the Carp Interest team. Boost morale and the help when you've had an early start and no breakfast, so burgers for dinner. We've had a minute to sit down, it's been a bit hectic as it always is when you're uh, setting up and that first day. We uh, finally got a chance to sit down, got the burgers on. It smelled delicious. Burger sauce and cheese already on the buns, ready to stock us up for a haul. Yep. With a bit of luck. <laughs> we hope. But well, these burgers look like they're done, so we're going to shut this off and we're going to enjoy these. Was that a liner? Was that a liner? Yeah, no, but they're swimming out now. Look, got right over your spot. Little nightmares. We'll take it as a liner, though. So we're just coming into the, the first evening now, just finished our food. Um, so far it's been quiet, not heard anything around the lake, it's been pretty dead all across. Um, but like we said before, we've, we've been spamming about this morning, leading around, so we wasn't expecting anything today. So tomorrow will be the real test. Hopefully with this wind from the southwest, uh, it pushes them in and they, they discover our beds of bait. We're really hoping to catch one before we wake up tomorrow. It's so disheartening when you wake up on your first morning and you haven't caught. It just adds pressure to your session and it's just nice to get one out of the way. So fingers crossed we can get one before dark. I reckon if we get one, there's a chance of us getting two or three due to the, how heavily stopped this lake is. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get the kettle on now, settle down for the night and we'll get back to you if we get a fish or in the morning. Good morning carpers, uh, there was no fish last night and no fish this morning as of yet, it's about half past seven. Um, last night I went onto the Thorpe Lee Fishery Group, it's on Facebook. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you get on there if you do think about fishing the lake because uh, people share a lot of information on there, fish pictures. And there's also a search bar at the top of the page that you can search for anything you're looking for. For example, bottom, weed, silt, pegs. You know, bite times. I was searching quite a lot of stuff just to see if I could gauge any information that would help. And um, 
after this morning, I found out on last night that the bike time is usually six to eight in the morning. I've seen a few posts, so I thought I'd get myself up nice and early, between six and eight, and I'd watch the water, see if I could see any signs of fish. So as you saw earlier, I uh, made an early start. I got here to about six after six and I started watching the walk for a couple of hours. And lo and behold, nine o'clock, went back in my bivvy, took my head down for an hour and uh, I had a ripper. Got onto it, had it on for about 10 seconds and it, it just managed to get off. So I've just lost one. Last night we made a slight change to our tactics. We did have one bag and one boom out, but due to the bird life we got in front of us, uh, we felt like we were having pickups on the solid bag. So we made the decision to go on to two booms on each rod purely because if you do pick a boom up, it's naturally just gonna keep resetting itself and you'll be fishing all night. I opted for, last night, one seven inch Ronnie and one nine inch Ronnie. And it was the nine inch Ronnie that did the fish and with a big bright yellow pop-up. So I'm gonna switch now to two nine inch Ronnies with two yellow pop-ups on the baited area and see if we can do any more bites. So I've moved down into peg 14 now. I was gonna do it first thing this morning, but after Pete had that run, I thought it was better to stick it out there just in case the fish had moved in on us. But as the day has gone on, it's quite clear that they haven't. So we have saw a couple of fish show out in front of here throughout the session. On the advice of the, the girls down at the office, I've wrapped up to 22 wraps, which there's, the only issue is it's only a couple of foot deep. So after doing that little bit of leading around, I've came up with a plan. So what I'm gonna do, at the 22 wraps where it was really shallow, I'm gonna put out a, a Ronnie boom with a little 12 mil yellow pop-up. Really shallow there, so I don't really want there to be any bait that the, the birds can dive on. Um, but then at 21 wraps, it does drop off a little bit deeper, so I'm gonna put a solid bag at 21 wraps just to the left-hand side, probably a rod length to the, to the left. So I'm covering slightly deeper water, but I'm also on that bar where we saw them showing. So the single now, out onto that gravel bar, no bait over it, just saw a fish crash on there. Hopefully I can nail it first time. That'll do. So as I made you aware earlier, the, the run that I got was on the nine inch Gemini carp tackle tidy boom for the Ronnie rig. And I'm just gonna run you through how simple it is to create one of these. Starting from the bottom is an anti-tangle sleeve. Work your way up is a bit of putty if you need to counterbalance pop-up or maybe even a wafter. You then need a heat shrink tube just to go over the hook just before you connect it to the boom. Once it's slid onto the boom, you can slide the heat shrink tube down, heat that up and make it all neat. And then you need a micro ring swivel or a bait screw whichever way you want to attach your bait. I've opted for the micro ring swivel due to the bird life behind. They've been sw uh, swimming down and picking up our baits. I reeled in this morning on one of my rods and my bait had gone, so I've been done by one of the birds. So on the ones going out now, I'm using bait floss and I've tied a little knot and I've put a little bait stock through and I've tied it down and melted it on. So that just gives it a bit more security. Working your bait back up again, you'll need a hook bead to stop the micro ring swivel or bait swivel coming off. And last but not least, the most important is your hook. So I've opted for the Gemini Carp Tackles Circulus Hook. Uh, it fits really nice on these Ronnie rigs and it's, it sits wonderful underwater. But one of the main choices I've chose this one is if you look directly down the, the hook, it's just off centre. Just gives an additional problem for the fish when he's trying to reject the hook.
So the evening's drawing in now on the second day. The move to peg 14 is complete, the rods are out. Still haven't put any bait out, I'm contemplating whether to when it goes dark and the birds have moved off because the fella next door's just had one not long after uh, putting a bit of bait out. So I'm super confident, the, the most confident I've been so far this session. There's fish showing over that that bar. So And both my rods are on the spot with the top to a little bit more bait from today. And uh, hopefully we can repeat this morning, but hopefully keep the fish on this time. I'm quite confident it's going to happen again in the morning. Not so much through the night, but I reckon between, like I said, six and now nine o'clock in the morning, I reckon that's the best time I'm going to perceive a bite. But now we're just going to put the camera away unless we get any action, just so we can actually have a nice chill night. Uh, I'm going to eat some snacks and hopefully see you next with a fish. Put me already on backwards in a rush. <laughs> So it's been a lot longer coming than both of us expected, but finally we've got the first one on the bank. About four o'clock in the morning, the left hand rod, the solid bag just off the area, it ripped off. We've got this lovely upper double. The move paid off, coming down into peg 14 earlier, well, yesterday now. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's produced the goods. I'm pretty sure there's plenty more out there. The fish really are getting onto that bar. So with a bit of luck, we'll be able to back this up with a couple more as the rest of today and into tomorrow morning goes. But for now, we're going to slip this one back and as I say, go and get another one. Well, it's morning update time. And I'm into a fish. The solid bag rod again, the one that went off last night. Got it back out in the dark. It went out really nice, to be honest. And uh, yeah, not sure what time it is now, but it's just absolutely ripped off. And I'm playing another Thor play fish. After I put the rods back out earlier on, about four o'clock this morning, I did get the spam out and I put four or five spums back over the spot. In the net. Fish number two. So whilst the fish is uh, safely in the net, I'm just gonna get this bag back out on the spot because we're in the middle of bite time. I'll try and turn two fish into three. Sink the line, get it on the pod. And then we'll get that fish out and show you. There's fish number two. Again, by no means a monster, but definitely welcome and what it lacks in size it certainly makes up for in looks some beautiful scales we're going to slip this one back and then i'm going to go through in in detail how i tie my solid bags up what's in the solid bag makes the whole process a far lot quicker right fish number three 
drop back bike this time. It's concentrating here because I've got a load of weed around my tap eye. I'm a bit concerned. Same mud again, yeah, solid bag. Making me consider swapping the boom over to a bag as well, but me and Pete was having a discussion a little bit earlier. And I'm hoping that maybe the boom, the pop-up will uh, trip up the bigger fish. So I think I'm gonna stick with it, especially while this rod's producing the way it is. In we go. So, fish number three. Biggest of the trip so far. Still not into any of the, the really big ones yet, but we're definitely getting amongst them now. Like I say, once again, it was a solid bag. Out, out on the bar. The issue I've got now is whether I risk putting some bait out with a bird life or just hope that the solid bags keep producing. Yeah, we're going to get this one back and see if we can get into any other bigger ones. So, the right hand rod on the boom has finally put me into some action. I was just tying up some uh, solid bags because they seem to be working, but I think I might leave a boom on now. So the bait that was put in yesterday finally started to work. Just gotta watch that rod now. Feels like it's got some weight to it. So, as we just slipped Liam's back, my swim, right hand rod, ripped off, Ronnie Boom, Ronnie Rig on the baited area. Stunning fish, this is what we've come for. We've seen a few of these on the wall on the way in. And uh, look at just the colours and the pattern on it. So it's finally got me off the mark, so it's a, I'm loving it. And uh, hopefully there's plenty more to come. Whilst I'm playing this fish, a heron went across the water and it spooked my spot and about six or seven carp all just shot away. So hopefully they move back in and they land on the other rod that's in the water. But I'm gonna put this one back and get this one back out on the spot. See if we can get a few more like this one. So, just slipping this beauty back now. Like I say, definitely hopeful for a few more. Right, so, just finished doing pictures and videos with the last fish. I was just wrapping up to get the rod back out on the spot. And now the left hand rod's gone. So the safe to say that the spot is definitely now working. So, quickly need to land this let it rest and get the two rods back out on the spot with the hope of getting some more. So this is another boom, it's exactly the same rig as it caught the last fish. And it looks like there's a lovely common coming in. Doing some acrobatics here, trying to get away, but if it's anything like the last fish, she was nailed. That's a fella. Oh, fish number two. So just after slipping that first one back, second one's absolutely ripped off. Safe to say the spot's working now. Another stunning looking fish. More than happy now. I'm definitely gonna put some more bait on when we slip this one back though and see if I can double these figures. But uh, like I said, these last two fish I've had now look stunning. But again, fell to the nine inch boom on a Ronnie rig. Small white pop up, tripped it up in the net. So we're getting back now and we get some bait out.
both rods back out. Let's get some bite on. We've got a break in the action so I can finally bring you an in-depth look into what's been catching me the fish. The tidy stems from Gemini Carp Tackle. Uh, like I said, it's been a hectic morning. We haven't really had chance, but we've finally got the chance now. So, what I've got here is just a simple solid bag rig. It's just a, a bog standard hair rig, about three inches in length. The tidy stems come with a, an O-ring attachment or a quick chain swivel. I'm using the O-ring attachment here because it's, it's just quicker and easier. You haven't got to put any silicon over it. The tidy stem itself, 5.75 millimeters in diameter. The three and a half ounce Gemini leads, inline leads, fit perfectly, really snug fit over the stem, down and push in. Still easy enough to pull away in case of a crack off, fish safety. The good thing about these is that the insert, instead of it being a rigid metal or plastic, it's actually fused fluorocarbon with a breaking strain of 45 pound. So the benefits of this to, for me, mainly number one is fish safety. So when you've got a fish in the net and this is banging up against them, it's really flexible. The plastic or the, the metal ones, the, they're gonna get poked into the fish and, and what have you. So that's the main thing for me. Another thing is the loop, with it being the fluorocarbon, it just runs freely along your, your, your main line. It's not gonna damage your main line in any way. As you all know, there's a million and one ways to tie a solid bag, but I'm no expert. I'm just going to run you through exactly what I've been doing this session to, to catch the fish. So first things first, the hook bait down, push the hook bait into the right into the bottom corner with the hook just off it. A little bit of pellets. This is just a, a mixture of two mil pellets, different colours. Enough to lock that hook bait into place and then I'll fill it up just over halfway and then I'll dump the lead in. Now because I'm fishing at, at 22 wraps, I know it's not a massive distance for a lot of people but I'm not a huge caster, I want all the aerodynamics to be in my favour so that lead needs to be dead central to the, to the bag which is about there and then just fill it up, half an inch or so above the lead, pinch the top, knock it down, get all the air out of it, grab it, twist, again making sure it's nice and tight, take yourself a length of PVA tape, wrap it round four or five times, tie that off. Then simply trim the tag ends off, any of the excess PVA, get all that trimmed off. There's your completed solid bag. The only thing left now is to, to complete the aerodynamics of the bag. Push down the corners, bring the tab out, a little bit of moisture. Stick that down hold for a couple of seconds. And there you've got perfectly aerodynamic bag tied with the Gemini tidy stems. So we had to sit down and a little chill. Uh, everything's changed from yesterday. Um, I was I weren't very confident at all going into last night and coming out coming out this morning. But uh, it's fishing and it changes just like that. And now I'm sitting here confident and I feel like the pressure's off. So I can just enjoy the last night and hopefully get a few more. As soon as I came into peg 14, I moved from from next to peg into 14. I was I was really confident. It looked really good. There was fish showing there. I'd found the first bit of gravel that I found this session. So yeah. I, I, I kind of deep down I think I knew something was going to happen but I didn't want to jinx yeah. it and say it was going to happen but like we, we both come here thinking it was going to be easier than it yeah. has been so it's humbled us a little bit. Oh, I ain't ashamed to admit it we, yeah, we, we so. come expecting that we weren't going to have to work too hard for it and but yeah like a move move paid off you know a baited area paid off 
stuck with the booms, they paid off, you know, it's all coming into place and not, you know, like I say, there's still time. You know, if they come like they did earlier, there's still time for plenty more fish. So we are confident there's going to be a few more. Look, full night and a little bit of the light in the morning. So I reckon there's still a chance to get a few here. But, I'd be uh, surprised if we don't put another couple on the bank, but like you said, it's fishing, so yeah. it can turn off just as quickly as it turned on. Yeah. I think and, it's about uh, time you got the kettle on and I ain't playing rock, paper, scissors. I made the last one. <laughs> it's your turn to put the kettle on and have a cup of tea. All right then, yeah. So I think it's going to be a brew and a watch of the lake to see if anything presents itself. So I'm just in peg 19, uh, just watching the water. It's the peg quite near to the island. Um, it's an 18 acre lake. Uh, there's over two and a half thousand fish in here. Uh, there's a good head of 30s. I think it's still waiting on its first 40 pound car. One ain't been out here in a few years and that was 37 pound the late record. So if that ain't been caught for uh, three years, it could be anywhere between mid 40s, you know. But I'm sure with all the other 30s in here, with all the bait that goes in, I'm guessing, it won't be long before it does its first 40. And I've uh, just seen one crash. Come over here, mate. Come and come dine with me. <laughs> again. And again. Oh, they're dancing. Oh, it's gone from come dine with me to dancing on ice. Oh, mate, they're coming out. So I've just had to quickly move a rod whilst talking because obviously we had a big dancing show in the middle of the lake. Back to the lake. Uh, like I said, the girls will help you with all the spots. You know, they're very helpful here. They've got a well-stocked shop on site, the sell boilie and pellet, all various brands. So, you know, if you're ever running short on a session, it's nice just to nip back to there, to the hut, and you can purchase some more bait. They also leave about six or seven barrows at the car park, so you don't even need to bring your own barra. You can use the on-site barra, which is a massive help to me because I don't really use them most of the time. But uh, I'm just gonna watch the water now where I've cast that rod out to them showing fish, and hopefully you can uh, peel off and give us some afternoon action. So the solid bag rig is already out there for the evening. I did attempt to do this before our takeaway came. When I put the solid bag rig out, but a slight mishap happens to the best of us. So it has to wait until after food when I could set the rod back up. And now I'm ready to get it out on the spot for the evening. Yep. We've got that crosswind from left to right starting to pick up as the evening draws in. So we're heading into the last night now. Uh, we've just finished the takeaway from a Moore's Pizza. Rather nice. If you're on the lake, I would recommend. But nothing else on the fish front. Uh, I've put one rod at max 22 wraps tonight just because I've seen on the Facebook page and the guy next door has advised it basically. He says they always live on that bar further out. So I've, I've cast one 22 wraps, max my swim can take. And I've left one on the spot. Liam's put his solid bag out and single back out by the bar and off the bar. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed, I'm quite confident that one of us is gonna get at least one more and we'll be able to see you through the night. So I was just having a social with the boys next door and I had a weird drop back and I can't check the rod and it was bobbing was just lifted up and down nice and slow. Weren't really sure if it was a bite but then my bobbing dropped all the way down. So I decided to hit into it and then uh, this little fella's on the end. Uh, not the biggest obviously but it looks stunning. And it's just another one just to show that the rig's working. That's all you want just before bed is just a bit of fish slime in your mouth. But uh, there's the other side. Stunning little fish but I'm going to get it back before it batters me again. And I'm going to get the rod back out at the 22 wraps where this was caught. <sighs> so, good morning. And once again, we're starting the morning update with a fish. It's kited me right. I'm just trying to get it back in. To be honest with you, I'd got up, I'd just started packing up because I've got to be off an hour and a half and all my stuff's in the right state. But 
We'll always take a fish when we can get one. I think it's on the solid bag again. I can't remember in which order I put them out. I'm pretty sure this is the solid bag. But they're not too far from each other. So if they have moved into the area, there's a possibility the other one will go as well. It isn't giving up without a fight. Oh, well, we'll take them ones. Twenty-five and a half. Yeah. yeah. So good morning. Biggest fish of the trip so far. Twenty-five and a half. The solid bag again. Twenty-one wraps just off the the bar. Um, it's the last one. The solid bag will do for me, though. I'm afraid I'm not going to put that one back out. We've got to be off here in around an hour, and I've got a lot of sorting out to do. But yeah, really good to get amongst some of the slightly larger ones. Really nice wake-up call. Better than the alarm clock anyway. We're going to get a few still images of this one now and then we'll slip it back. Maybe that boom will go off and I can get another one. So that brings our 72 hour session here at Thorpe Lee to an end. We've had a really good time fishing, really enjoyed it. It's a great venue, the staff are very helpful. If you haven't been here before, I definitely recommend it. But uh, we're in the pack down phase at the moment. I'm pretty much packed down, Liam's not far off. All I've got left at the minute is the pod and the rods, just for a last minute chance of a fish. But if you don't see us again with a fish, It'll be on to the next one. So if you are liking the videos, guys, make sure you're liking and subscribing to Gemini Carp Tackle and Carp Interest, and we'll see you on the next one.